DJ Uyunglele is going into his third school in three years at Florida State this season. It'll be, as I understand it, eligibility is weird, but his final year of eligibility for college football. And he goes to the Seminoles to replace Jordan Travis, step in and be the starter. And I got to thinking about this because these are the sorts of things I ponder at any random moment in the day. I could be out for a walk on the golf course. I don't go for walks unless it's on the golf course. Usually, generally speaking, it could be in the shower, it could be making dinner, eating breakfast, whenever. This thought popped into my head. Is DJ Uyunglele good enough to get Florida State to the playoff? See, I asked the question earlier in the show, is he good enough? Well, that depends on what you're asking. Because if you're going to ask DJ Uyunglele to be the focal point of your offense, if you're going to run everything through him and try to turn him into a Heisman caliber quarterback, I have news for you. He's not good enough to do that. There, there is a proven track record here. And I do not see, though Florida State has had a superb fourth ranked talent composite ranking for their transfer portal class, according to 24-7 Sports, well-deserved when you look at the number and caliber of players that they've brought in. I do not feel, even with that much talent, that DJU, I don't think if you put him on last year's team, he's a Heisman contender the way that Jordan Travis was. DJU's been a starter in college football for three years. He has had one, count them, one season in which he completed over 60% of his passes. It was the 2022 season with Clemson. He was benched multiple times throughout that year, by the way and then transferred to Oregon State, where he went to an offense that is certainly quarterback friendly in the sense that it is a very defined offense with the reads that Jonathan Smith and his OC Brian Lindgren, who are now up at uh, Michigan State in East Lansing with Aiden Giles, of course. When you look at what they ask their quarterbacks to do, it's not a ton. It's not as if, you know, it's everything's tailor-made easy, but it's more like the Shanahan offense than it is the air raid offense, shall we say. There's a lot of play action, defined throws, simple concepts, two-man routes. DJU did not hit 60% of his passes last year. He threw for 219 yards a game. He had 20 touchdowns and seven interceptions. Now, over the last two years, he has 42 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. For those of us who are math majors, that I'm, I'm not. But some of you out there may be. And you know what? That's all good and fine. I hope you're doing great. Three to one. It's a three to one touchdown interception ratio. It's fine. It's fine. It's not great. It's not great, but it's but it's not bad. It's not bad. And that's what DJ Uyunglele is. So when I think about Florida State and the fact that they are uh, tied with Clemson as the betting favorite to win the ACC this year, I think about how that is putting a lot of faith, which is frankly deserved, in Mike Norvell and the rest of the Florida State team, in the rest of the Florida State coaching staff. Because last year in 11 games, Jordan Travis was throwing for 250 yards a game, and he had a touchdown interception ratio of 20 to 2. DJU's not going to do that. Jordan Travis, I think, is a more talented quarterback, and he had better weapons. There are going to be good weapons on this Florida State team. Make no mistake about it. But I wonder about the ground game. Because the reason that DJU was a good fit on paper, and it's not as if it went poorly in Corvallis. They were 8-4, and four, lost a couple uh, of close games, most notably to Washington at home in uh, Week 11 or Week 12, whatever it was. That, that was a game where Oregon State was 8-2. and two. They were ranked, uh, I think, 12th in the country at the time. Washington was inside the top 10, and they barely lost the game. And the difference was that Michael Penix outplayed DJU. So I just think there's such a big track record that we know what he is and shouldn't expect him to be something else. But Florida State was a playoff team last year when Jordan Travis was at the helm, who was throwing for more yards a game and didn't turn the ball over as much and had a better completion percentage. And, and, and DJU was at a team where he wasn't asked to do as much. Is he going to be asked to do the same amount as Jordan Travis? If so, then the ACC might be more open than you think. Names to know for the Seminoles going into this year. TJ Ferguson, transferred from Alabama, former four-star recruit, grades as much, according to 24-7 Sports, in the transfer portal, interior offensive lineman. He, along with other big fellows up front, are going to be important because Roy Dell Williams is the running back they brought in, also from, excuse me, also from the University of Alabama. 
that's going to be essential. You cannot give DJU the keys to an offense and say, we need you to throw, mm, I don't know, 35, 40 times a game. That's not where he's at his best. Can he be better than what he had last year? Yeah, I think the the wide receiving core he'll have at Florida State this year is better than what he had at Oregon State a season ago. I think in that sense, it's an upgrade. But DJU was at his best last year when he's able to throw off play action, when he had a ground game, when he wasn't asked to carry the offense. When he had to do that at Clemson, it was a little bit of a struggle. It was a little bit of a struggle, and they went with Cade Klubnik instead. So I think that this is one of the most interesting components maybe the most interesting component for Florida State, is you have a capable quarterback. DJ Uyunglele is absolutely, without a doubt, a starting caliber quarterback at the power level of college football. We've seen that. He's won games. He's been in big spots. He's thrown for a decent amount of yards. He's thrown for a lot of touchdowns. He can run a little bit. But is he Jordan Travis? No. No. He cannot be Jordan Travis. Meaning, a roster for Florida State that lost a lot of NFL talent. A couple of receivers, Jared Verse on the, along the defensive line, just to name a few. They've replaced a lot of those guys with people on paper that that fit, that are that are a talent match to make it the same caliber of team. But even if you have the same caliber of team, you do not have the same caliber of quarterback. And so for DJ Uyunglele, he has to go out there and be himself, and that's good enough to get Florida State into the ACC championship game and into the playoff. But once he gets there, once he gets to those big games, let's say Florida State is playing Miami. Same win total, according to our friends at FanDuel, by the way. Nine and a half, the Hurricanes and the Seminoles. If the ACC title game is Florida State and Miami, look, I need to watch the teams. For, for an entire season before I make a pick on that game. But do you know what I know right now? I think Norvell's a better in-game coach than Mario Cristobal. But I think that Cam Ward is a better quarterback than DJU. So when you get to the high-level games, will DJU hit his ceiling? Will he be out-quarterbacked? Will he be outplayed? Because he can be. Because a lot of teams that get to that sort of level, conference championship games or 12-team playoff games and everything of the sorts, they're going to oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes have very high level quarterback play. And when you go into a game with a deficit at that position, it can be a lot harder to win. Not impossible, but it can be harder. So expecting him to be something he's not is not where my head would be if I were a Florida State fan. And I think that for Mike Norvell and the Seminoles, they have got to be able to craft an offense that allows him to succeed without asking him to do too much. I think he's got better resources in some ways than what he had at Oregon State last year. Does that mean he'll be a better player on the field? Time will tell. We're almost to the end of March, which means we're almost to April, which is, you know, adjacent to May, June, July, August. We got a ways to go before the season. It'll be here before you know it. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.